Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at the photo mode in Resident Evil for the remake. So we're in the game now. So let's see how we do we actually get into the photo mode. So we'll press the options button to pause the game. And then if you look at the bottom, there's a square button. We'll press that. Bang. We're in the photo mode. Okay, so first and foremost, if you use the left and the right analog sticks, this will the left one moves the camera like this, so it's just like where it is, and the right one does the sort of angle. So you can move them together to get a perspective on what we're doing. So let's let's try and get an angle where we can get both characters in it. So there we go. What else have we got? Um, so we've got L2 and R2 does this. It's craning, it lifts the camera up, it takes the camera down. So you might want to change the perspective like that. Or you might want to go up and look down. So I would use craning L2 and R2 buttons with the joysticks as a combination effect because it's quite useful. Um, if you want to toggle the HUD on or off to so see what we're doing, you can press the options button. So there we can have a look at the actual framing. So we'll toggle it back on. If you press the middle sort of touchpad, brings up this, which is not very helpful. It just says if you want to take your photo, you need to do the screenshot button. So if you wanted to take a photograph of your actual image, press the options button to remove the HUD like that. And then you click the share button on your controller. And then the image will appear in your PlayStation gallery. What else have we got? Circle exits the photo mode. Uh, we won't do that. Um, triangle restores the default setting. So anything you've changed in those tabs on the right that we're going to look at in a moment, if you press the triangle button, it will reset those settings. If you press the square button, that will reset the camera position, but we won't do that because we've got a nice camera position here to look at. So that's the basic stuff. So then we've got the L1 and R1 buttons. That clicks through all of these advanced settings. So let's go through them one by one. Okay, so area of view. This is basically field of view. It's like a zoom. So we can go pretty far out. The problem is when you go far out, there's a barrel distortion. Can we change the barrel distortion? Let me quickly try something. Um, no, not really. Yeah, so it's good if you want to get a wider angle. There is a limited amount of space you can actually photograph because it's not an open world game, so it's quite tightly knit. Um, so that's how you come in and out. Inclination, tilting, like you can tilt an image sometimes like sort of at an angle, like that, something like, like a diagonal. It's good if you want to create surrealism or action movement, stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's the first tab. Second tab is blur. On or off, well, obviously, if it's on, then we can choose the focus distance. So look, so there's the focus distance. So we can say what's in focus, how far away. So we'll get it on Leon and that. Blur overall doesn't... Now these sh blur short range, long range overall, this is really not a good system. With depth of field and focus, what do you need? You only need three things. You need depth of field on or off. You need where is the sort of focus distance origin point, and then you need how much focus is there going to be, which in relation dictates how much blur there's going to be. Here, you've got short and long blur, which, I mean, it doesn't seem to make any difference a lot of the time. Like, uh, okay, so short, long range blur. All right, okay. Like these, I, I can't really explain to you what these do. These are just things you've got to fiddle around with because... What does the short one do? See, so again, nothing's happening. Anyway, I'm not, I personally wouldn't really use this setting because it's just cumbersome and annoying and it's, it's designed by someone who hasn't actually tested it. So, but we'll put it on with a little bit of blur in the background like that, okay? All right, next tab, brightness, contrast, vignettes, bloom, etc. right. Now the brightness slider obviously makes it bright. So like this does the job okay. 
I would say these sliders don't really feel authentic to photography. Like, look at this contrast. Look, now Leon and Ash, is it Ashley? Now they're in Essex. Uh, and now let's turn the, con the contrast down, doesn't do much. But if you go all the way up, this is, I mean, that's not contrast. Let me tell you something. I'm a photographer. I've been editing photos for 15 years. Contrast doesn't work like that. It's, it, look, the image has gone inverted. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So we're going to take the contrast off. I would say if you turn bloom off, sometimes the contrast works better, but obviously not in this case. Um, right, so brightness contrast, not fit for purpose. Vignettes, vignettes provide a border. If you look at the edge of the screen now, it sort of darkens the edge. So, oh, wow, that's a big vignette, isn't it? So you can kind of vignette like that. But again, this is really cloudy vignetting because... Really, you need a vignette and a vignette fall off. The fall off is like an intensity slider of the vignettes. And without the intensity sliders, you're really dealing with incredibly heavy handed settings, which are not fit for purpose. Again, so another bad setting. Next, we've got bloom. Bloom, well, it makes it kind of like blurry, smudged, almost dreamlike. So it's good if you want to create like an old 80s vibe, you know, sort of a Vaseline lens type photography. We we might let's put some some of that on let's have a look maybe like a little is quite nice so the bloom's not bad next tab filters okay so we've got some very some nice filters like that's probably my favorite because that feels like the old school um type ones doesn't it like the old resident evil feel problem with these um filters that's another nice one we're just screenshotting these problem with these filters is um, there's no slider. So a filter is really something that you deal with in photography as a very delicate means to alter the color toning of the image. Now, if you're dealing with an image that um, you're putting a filter on, it's a bit strange to not have an intensity slider. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's really like too heavy handed. If you could drop that down a bit, it'd be nice, but you can't. So again, another setting that isn't really thought through. Um, I do think this is in general, this is on, a, on an aside. I think this is a Japanese game issue. The Japanese have never been early adopters on the photo modes. They never really wanted to put them in their games because they have very sort of strict copyright law in Japan and they don't really Feel like they want photo modes but they put them in but they never put them in with something that actually feels like it's user friendly that's just an aside but anyway lens distortion on or off well obviously i would recommend always having the lens distortion off because when you have a lens in real life lenses are rarely flat they have a curvature so as you zoom in or zoom out the curvature becomes more severe on the image as you can see you know you don't notice it when it's on when you turn it off it kind of feels more natural, but on or off, whatever you want. And then the strength of it. I mean, you can do some bizarre stuff with it there. If you want to make some sort of really surrealistic elements, I would probably just turn it off, actually. Chromatic aberration. This is like corners of the image, a bit like the vignettes, but it gives a sort of a distorted feel to the corners. Um, I can't say we can really notice it. Can you? No, not really. So... If we can't notice it, it's not a very vibrant effect, so we'll just uh, leave that off. Next tab, frame type. Square, rectangle, 4x3. You want to do a widescreen version um, and none. So that's really how you want to frame. Um, logo. So if you want to put the logo on the actual image, you can move it around. So, you know, we could put one up there like that. It's quite nice. Little poster, isn't it? And then we've got copyright, the most pointless ever thing in a photo mode. No one in their right mind is going to be putting Capcom copyright on an image that they're essentially taking because the photographer owns the copyright. They own the source material, but also as a photographer, you own the copyright to your image. So why they put that in there, I don't know. The Japanese uh, obsession with copyright, get with the times. Anyway, the final tab, what is that one? Subtitle display. I guess that depends if you've got subtitles on in the game. I don't. Main character display. There goes Leon disappearing. 
enemy display we don't have any enemies npc so ah goodbye and fauna that's if there's grass um and grid why is a grid useful well let's see the grid so yeah the grids the grids are useful for many reasons just to measure where the characters are you might want to space things like equally but any like you know you might want to say put it on the eye line or whatever like you know you can just use it to balance the photograph so but that's the photo mode so we'll press circle and we'll come out um what do i think about the photo mode i think first and foremost i think i think it's nice to have a photo mode of course i'm glad we've got one the negative i would say is that it's um it's got too many settings that are not fit for purpose hang on what is this guy doing around here and it's a bit annoying really um i think if you're going to put a photo mode in a game i think you need to do something that has like some thoughts put into the actual process of the photo mode and i think the problem with this one is you can't move the character the camera too far away from the, the game um, unless you use this setting i think there's issues with settings not having uh, effective sliders and all that sort of stuff so i think overall it's about a five out of ten so it's not a great photo mode but you know it is what it is what a mess i've got in myself here but anyway that's the photo mode guys if you found it useful comment if you've got any questions comment if you've got anything to say about the channel or the videos comment but until next time enjoy the photo mode have a go at resident evil you can take good pictures but the post processing options are pretty bad so you'll have to make do with what you've got anyway this is pg uh signing off have a good one and i will be back on another vp guide very soon cheers